we should be scared to death of the government regulating the internet. Amen. Yeah. That should be our, our biggest fight over the next 10 years is gonna be whether or not the internet remains free. And our next speaker is exactly that. He's a gentleman who um, puts out a bio that's very short. In fact, if you look at the links that we provided for today's conference, um, he's been very modest about what he does and who he is. He describes himself as a creative strategist, but what's really key in his bio, he says, he's a professional instigator of ideas. And I like that. Uh, Raymar, I, I see you from time to time in town. Uh, we both live down in Sarasota. And he, he's a spark of energy, uh, uh, growth energy in the city. And he does uh, create a bit of uh, instigative style of idea with his various platforms. And I'll let him describe those to you this morning. Let's welcome Raymar. Okay. In 1440, Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press. Uh, the interesting thing about this invention is that it would not have been possible if it had not been for the advent of mass-produced paper, uh, technological innovations in ink technology, as well as eyeglasses. Right? And so at the same time, you have an aggregation of inventions that allows Johannes Gutenberg to come and uh, invent this machine, which then allows us to revolutionize uh, mass communication. In 1650, the first advertisement comes out. In 1704, they print the first advertisement in a newspaper. All right, and so now we're starting to see that uh, the, the small cities, small towns, everyone's adopting this medium. But we're also starting to see that people understand the power of putting their message in front of people at scale, right? <clears throat> and so shortly thereafter, the internet is, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, radio's invented. We're a couple steps away from the internet. Um, Marconi invents the radio in 1899, the first wireless signal is sent, and all this leads into, again, this idea of mass communications. But what is proliferating through the same time, what is being developed at the same time, is this idea of advertising, of PR, right? In 19, what is it, 29, the first TV is presented, right, to the public. And so now we're not only just starting to see words, we're not just hearing signals, we're seeing and emoting, we're, we're, we're being engaged at every level. Our sensory perception is being engaged at every level, okay? Advertising continues to take off. When we look at it now, the, the, the industry itself was in its mere infancy at $3 billion. Now you can see that Procter & Gamble spends about half of that on advertising annually themselves. The market itself is over $500 billion. The average person checks their phone 85 times a day. The average person between the age of 18 and 33. This is astounding. We have become connected or I'm sorry, addicted to connectivity. And this connectivity is doing a lot of really interesting things for us, but it has not changed the fact that we are still interrupting these massive audiences with advertising. Advertising has been unchanged. And so this is going to be the first year that advertising on the internet, digital media advertising will actually outpace television spend, which is fairly amazing. But it's also creating this connectivity has empowered people to start saying, how do I leverage this technology, this new media game, and become my own boss? And so by 2020, we're going to see 50% of the workforce is going to be freelance. People want to own their own brand, which means we're all becoming media companies. This is what one minute on the internet looks like. All right? We're proliferating all of this information. Everyone is shouting out, trying to be heard, and it has led to something that's absolutely crazy. 92% of us are connected through the internet, but digital commerce only accounts for less than 10% of the GDP, which means that we have not figured out how to do business online yet. We have tried, we have made really good attempts to do business online, but we haven't figured it out. And there's reasons. We talked about all the noise. Advertising has been unchanged. Fake news is there for a reason. It started as propaganda. This is Edward Bernays. He told women, this is how they made smoking cigarettes popular, wave your torches of freedom and they had parades about it, right? So we have to find a way, if we're gonna start doing business digitally, if we're gonna restore trust in media, if we're gonna eliminate this fake news, we have to find ways to build trust inside of these digital mediums, right? We have to find a way to connect because everything is changing and things are changing faster than most of us can even keep up. If we look at the scale of innovation here, we're looking at time on the bottom and technological advancement on the top here, right? And we're somewhere in this phase right here. We're laying the new, found work, uh, the new framework, the new foundation, if you will, for this whole new society. Think about when the highways were built. There was just a big expanse of land and there weren't 
The highways were built for a long time before cities popped up. The internet, everything that we've built now are the cities. They are the paper, they are the ink technological revolution, they are the glasses that led to the printing press. We think we've seen invention and innovation, but we have not seen anything yet. We have a very specific choice to make with what we do with this technology. Do we build something beautiful? Or do we use it to continue to enslave ourselves? Because right now we're being robbed on a daily basis. These companies are taking the information that we produce, the stories that we tell, the creative capital that we're putting out into the internet is being given away for free. And we're gonna have to make a choice really soon. Do we continue to give this away for free? And do we continue to allow advertising to proliferate and the noise to just drown everybody out? Or do we use this technology to empower creative people, to empower innovation, to drive change, to find ways to disrupt everything, right? Because we talked about innovation and we're at a point where there is nothing that is off limits. There is no sacred cow. If you're in an industry and you think that this is not coming for you, you're sorely mistaken. And there's probably people like me working their asses off trying to figure out how do I take everything you have from you because you're, you're sitting in this comfort bubble, right? And so it's time to start thinking about what we can do with this technology to free people, not to enslave people, not how can we monetize this information for advertising, but how can we empower the individual who created it to do something special with that? How can they take this little piece of something with this open source medium that was the internet, that was supposed to set us free, but that is on the verge of potentially enslaving us uh, for generations to come? So we have that choice to make. My name's Ryan Martorado. I'm the Chief Disruption Officer at Clear Idea Labs, and I'm on a mission to empower creative entrepreneurs. Part of that involves starting a revolution of ideas. I think the nef next revolution will be fought in the next decade, uh, but it's not going to be a bloody war. It's going to be a battle of information. It's going to be a battle of wallets. It's going to be a battle of behavior. And it's up to each one of us to figure out what side of that fight we're going to be on. Thank you.